Chapter 5 Kingdoms, Kings and an Early Republic How Some Men Became Rulers Choosing leaders or rulers by voting is something that has become common during the last 50 years or so. How did men become rulers in the past? Some of the Rajas we read about in Chapter 4 were probably chosen by the Jana, the people, but around 3000 years ago we find some changes taking place in the ways in which Rajas were chosen. Some men now became recognized as Rajas by performing very big sacrifices. The Ashwamedha or horse sacrifice was one such ritual. A horse was let loose to wander freely and it was guarded by the Raja's men. If the horse wandered into the kingdoms of other Rajas and they stopped it, they had to fight. If they allowed the horse to pass, it meant that they accepted that the Raja who wanted to perform the sacrifice was stronger than them. These Rajas were then invited to the sacrifice which was performed by specially trained priests who were rewarded with gifts. The Raja who organized the sacrifice was recognized as being very powerful and all those came brought gifts for him. The Raja was a central figure in these rituals. He often had a special seat, a throne or a tiger skin. His charioteer, who was his companion in the battlefield and witnessed his exploits, chanted tales of his glory. His relatives, especially his wives and sons, had to perform a variety of minor rituals. The other Rajas were simply spectators who had to sit and watch the performance of the sacrifice. Priests performed the rituals including the sprinkling of sacred water on the king. The ordinary people, the Vish or Vaisya, who brought gifts, however, some people such as those who were Regarded as Sudras by the priests were excluded from many rituals. Varnas We have many books that were composed in North India, especially in the areas drained by the Ganga and the Yamuna. During this period, these books are often called later Vedic because they were composed after the Rig Ved, about which you learnt in chapter 4. These include the Sam Ved, Yazur Ved and Atharva Ved as well as other books. These were composed by priests and described how rituals were to be performed. They also contained rules about society. There were several different groups in society at this time. Priests and warriors, farmers, herders, traders, crafts, persons, laborers, fishing folk and forest people. Some priests and warriors were rich as were some farmers and traders. Others including many herders, crafts, persons, laborers fishing folk and hunters and gatherers were poor. The priests divided people into four groups called Varnas. According to them, each one had a different set of functions. The first one was that of Brahmin. Brahmins were expected to study and teach the Vedas, perform sacrifices and receive gifts. In the second place were the rulers also known as Chhatris. They were expected to fight battles and protect people. Third were the Vish or the Vaisyas. They were expected to be farmers, herders and traders. Both the Kshatris and the Vaisyas could perform sacrifices. Last were the Sudras who had to serve the other three groups and could not perform any ritual. Often women were also grouped with the Sudras. Both women and Sudras were not allowed to study the Vedas. The priests also said that these groups were decided on the basis of birth. For example, if one's father and mother were Brahmins, one could automatically become a Brahmin and so on. Later, these classified some people as untouchable. These included some craftspersons, hunters and gatherers, as well as people who helped perform burials and cremations. The priests said that contact with these groups was polluting. Some people did not accept the system of urn laid down by the Brahmins. Some kings thought they were superior to the priests. Others felt that birth could not be a basis for deciding which one people belonged to. Besides, some people felt that there should be no differences amongst people based on occupation. Others felt that everybody should be able to perform rituals and others condemned the practice of untouchability. Also, there were many areas in the subcontinent such as the Northeast where social and economic differences were not 
वेरी सार एंड वेयर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द प्रिस्ट वॉज लिमिटेड जन पदास द राजाज हु परफॉर्म दीज बिग सेक्रीफाइसेज वेर नाउ रिकोगनाइज एज बींग राजाज ऑफ जनपदास रेदर देन जनास द वर्ड जनपद लिटरली मीन्स द लैंड वेयर द जना सेट इट्स फूड एंड सेटल्ड डाउन सम इम्पोर्टेंट जनपदाल आर सोन ऑन मैप फोर आर्क्योलॉजिस्ट्स हैव एक्सकेवेटेड ए नंबर ऑफ सेटलमेंट्स इन दी जनपदास सच एज पुराना किला इन दिल्ली हस्तिनापुर नियर मेरठ एंड अतरंजी खेरा नियर ईटा द लास्ट टू आर इन उत्तर प्रदेश दे फाउंड दैट पीपल लिव इन हर्ट्स एंड केप कैटल एज वेल एज अदर एनिमल्स दे ऑल्सो ग्रीव अ वेराइटी ऑफ क्रॉप राइस विथ बार्ले पल्सेस शुगर कैन सीसम एंड मस्टर्ड दे मेड अर्थन पॉट्स सम ऑफ दीज वेयर ग्रे इन कलर अदर्स वेयर रेड वन स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ पॉटरी फाउंड एट दिस साइट इज नोन एज पेंटेड ग्रे वेयर एज इज ऑबियस फ्रॉम द नेम दीज ग्रे पॉट्स हैड पेंटेड डिजाइन यूजली सिंपल लाइन्स एंड जोमेट्रिक पैटर्न महा जनपदास अबाउ ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो सम जनपदास बिकेम मोर इम्पोर्टेंट दैन अदर्स एंड वेयर नोन एज महा जनपदास सम ऑफ दीज आर सोन ऑन मैप फॉर मोस्ट महा जनपदास हैड अ कैपिटल सिटी मैनी ऑफ दीज वेयर फोर्टिफाइड दिस मीन्स दैट यूज वॉल्स ऑफ फूड ब्रिक और स्टोन वेयर बिल्ट अराउंड दैम फोर्ट्स वेयर प्रोबेबली बिल्ट बिकॉज पीपुल वेयर एफ्टेड ऑफ अटैक्स फ्रॉम अदर किंग्स एंड नीडेड प्रोटेक्शन इट इज ऑल्सो लाइकली दैट सम रूलर्स वॉन्टेड टू शो हाउ रिच एंड पावरफुल दी वेयर बाई बिल्डिंग रियली लार्ज टाल एंड इम्प्रेसिव वॉल्स अराउंड देयर सिटीज ऑल्सो इन दिस वे the land and the people living inside the fortified area could be controlled more easily by the king building such huge walls required a great deal of planning thousands if not lakhs of bricks or stones had to be prepared this in turn meant enormous labor provided possibly by thousands of men women and children and resources had to be found for all of this the new rajas now began maintaining armies Soldiers were paid regular salaries and maintained by the king throughout the year. Some payments are probably made using punch marked coins. You will read more about these coins in chapter eight. Taxes. As the rulers of the Mahajanpadas were building huge forts, maintaining big armies, they needed more resources, and they needed officials to collect these. So instead of depending on occasional gifts brought by people, as in the case of the Raja of the Jatpadas. they started collecting regular taxes taxes and crops were the most important this was because most people were farmers usually the tax was fixed at 1 by 6th of what was produced this was known as bhaga or a share there were taxes on crops parcels as well these could have been in the form of labor for example a weaver or a smith may have had to work for a day every month for the king herders were also expected to pay taxes in the form of animals and animal produce there were also taxes on goods that were brought and sold through trades and the hunters and gatherers also had to provide forest produce to the raja changes in agriculture there were two major changes in agriculture around this time one was the growing use of iron plows here this meant that heavy clay soil could be turned over better than with a wooden plow here so that more grain could be produced second people began transplanting paddy this meant that instead of scattering seed on the ground from which plants would sprout saplings were grown and then planted in the fields this led to increased production as many more plants survived however it was back breaking work generally slave men and women Thus, as and thus is, and landless agricultural laborers, Kamkaras had to do this work. A closer look, Magadh. Find Magadh on map four. Magadh became the most important Mahajanpad in about 200 years ago. Many rivers, such as the Ganga and Son, flowed through Magadh. This was important for transport, water supplies, making the land fertile. Parts of Magadh were forested. Elephants, which lived in the forest, could be captured and trained for the army. Forests also provided wood for building houses, carts, and chariots. Besides, there were iron ore mines in the region that could be tapped to make strong tools and weapons. Magadh had two very powerful rulers, Bimbisar and Ajatsatu. 
who used all possible means to conquer other Janpadas. Mahabad Mananda was another important ruler. He extended his control up to the northwest part of the subcontinent. Rajgir, present day Rajgir in the Bihar, was the capital of Magadh for several years. Later, the capital was shifted to Patliput, present day Patna. More than 2300 years ago, a ruler named Alexander, who lived in Makdunia in Europe, wanted to become a world conqueror. Of course, he didn't conquer the world, but did conquer parts of Egypt and West Asia and came to the Indian subcontinent, reaching up to the banks of Peace. When he wanted to march further eastward, his soldiers refused. They were scared as they had heard that the rulers of India had vast armies of foot, soldiers, chariots, and elephants. A closer look Vajji. While Magadh became a powerful kingdom, Vajji with its capital at Vaisali Bihar was under a different form of government known as Gan or Sang. In a Gan or a Sang, there were not one but many rulers, sometimes even when thousands of men ruled together, each one was known as a Raja. These Rajas performed rituals together. They also met in assemblies and decided what had to be done and how through discussion and debate. For example, if they were attacked by an army, they met to discuss what should be done to meet the threat. However, women, Dasas and Kamkaras could not participate in these assemblies. Both the Buddha and Mahavir, about whom you will read in Chapter 6, belong to Ganas or Sanghas. Some of the most vivid descriptions of life in the Sanghas can be found in Buddhist book. This is an account of Vajis from the Dignikaya, a famous Buddhist book which contains some of the speeches of the Buddha. These were written down about 2300 years ago. Ajat Sattu and the Vajis Ajat Sattu wanted to attack the Vajis. He sent his minister named Vashakara to the Buddha to get his advice on the matter. The Buddha asked whether the Vajis met frequently in full assemblies when he heard that they did. He replied that the Vajis would continue to prosper as long as they held full and frequent public assemblies. They met and acted together. They followed stabilized rules. They respected, supported, and listened to elders. Vajji women were not held by force or captured. Chaityas, local shrines were maintained in both towns and villages. Wise saints who followed different beliefs were respected and allowed to enter and leave the country freely. Rajas of powerful kingdom tried to conquer the Sanghas. Nevertheless, these lasted for a very long time till about 1500 years ago when the last of the Ganas or Sanghas were conquered by the Gupta rulers, about whom you will read in chapter 10.